I think everyone has heard at least once that you should have a main when playing a game such as Apex. A legend you can pick no matter what and feel confident on them, you know every little thing about them and can use their abilities to maximum potential. But now Apex is in season 11 and there are so many legends to pick from, how do you know which one is right for you? Legends are expensive, I know not everyone is like me and have over 600,000 tokens to spend. So you want to pick the right one when you buy a new one. So hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the most is 8 second gaming and today I'm going to break down every legend to help you find your main. Just a quick disclaimer though, this isn't a tier list or guide for the legends. We do have a tier list for season 11 currently on the channel that will be updated as new patches or metas come out. So if you want a tier list, you should go check out that video after watching this one. I also want to make it clear on how I'm categorizing these legends. I will be using the same system respawn does in game with offensive, recon, defensive, and support. This is just so that there's no confusion with the system. Some legends fit multiple spots, but that would make things confusing. Okay, we all clear? Great. Let's hop into the offensive legends. For the offensive category, the legends are as follows. Ash, Bangalore, Mirage, Fuse, Horizon, Octane, Revenant, and Wraith. So let's talk about Ash. She's all about third partying, getting on top of teams as fast and safely as possible, and making sure that they can't run away. With her passive showing where people are dying on the map, you can pick up some close fights to roll up on. She can then use her tactical to lock a player down on said teams and alt on top of them, bringing you and your whole squad to a spot in the blink of an eye. If you are a player who enjoys getting into the fight, but also gathering information on where other teams are, I would look to play Ash. Just be careful, her alt is a one-way trip and you cannot portal back. Only look to use this if you're 100% sure about taking this fight. Now let's talk about Bangalore. Bangalore is for the people that want to have more of a solo player's mindset. I say this because most of her abilities can screw with her team, leaving them stranded or out in the open. So she is more of a solo player, but she can do well in certain team comps, but that's for a different video. Bangalore's abilities start off with her passive, this is her double time, so when she gets shot at she starts to move faster. This is a really great tool for fighting and can make it really hard to catch you with your strafe speed. It also allows her to run around and get new angles and fights extremely quickly. Now moving on we have her tactical, this is her smoke grenade. Bangalore launches out a smoke screen from her shoulder, when it lands it creates a big cloud of smoke blocking off vision in that area. Though Cryptodrome, Bloodhound Scan, Bloodhound Ultimate, and Digi Threats can see through that smoke, it can be useful in certain situations when the team is far away. I would be careful with this though and I would try to smoke the enemy team instead of yours to try and help your team a little bit more. Instead of cutting off your team's sight lines, you cut off the enemy's sight lines, helping you in those fights. And her ultimate is an artillery stack that she can call down. It lands and explodes in waves. This is another one of the abilities that can really mess with your team if used incorrectly. Because if they get caught in it and they get hit by the ability, then it shell shocks them, leaving them stunned and slowed and it can be an easy shot. Bangalore is for those solo players, so if you're looking to be highly aggressive while being a solo player, then you Bangalore should be your main. Next up we have Mirage. Mirage's kit is all about deception and fooling his enemies. His passive is a little underwhelming for my taste but it allows him to go invisible while rezzing his teammates and using a respawn beacon. Also when he gets knocked he goes invisible to help combat being thirsted instantly. His tactical sends out a decoy copy of himself. You can let that run in a straight line or you can control it to mimic your movements. This can be confusing to some players and if they shoot it you get a little icon showing the location of whoever did shoot it. And his ultimate is just pure chaos causer. You spawn in a bunch of clones around you that also mimic your movements and you can make it kind of difficult to tell which one the real one is. There are some clues that do give away, so when you fight higher ranked people, they can tell a lot easier. Play Mirage if you enjoy messing with people's heads and having them second guess reality with some of the plays you can pull off. And a lot of people really enjoy his personality and find his voice lines funny. Just don't go looking into his backstory unless you want to cry. Now let's talk about the man from down under, Fuse. His kit is about causing mayhem and forcing teams to constantly move from the spots they are trying to play. His passive allows him to stack grenades, two to a stack, and he uses his robotic arm to throw nades faster and more precisely. His tactical is a knuckle cluster that can stick to enemies. It also blows up over time, dealing some damage to surrounding areas and can even blow off doors. This is a bit scarier than it has been in previous seasons due to buffs and can actually put in some work in team fights. And his mother load ultimate drops a ring of fire around a spot that you aim for. It deals a lot of damage to any enemies that pass through the fire. You can lock teams down in small areas extremely well with this and can really come in clutch with your passive nades to just spam teams with explosives. If you like making things go boom as well as making other teams upset because you've thrown 20 arc stars at them then Fuse is your boy. While we're on the topic of ultimates that go really well with nades, let's move on to Horizon. Horizon is for the people who love pulling off cool movement techs with her passive. Her passive makes it so whenever you hit the ground no matter the fall distance she doesn't have to do the recover animation. So as soon as you hit the ground you're back off and running. This makes for some really cool 
cool clips of people bouncing off gravity cannons and bunny hopping all over the place. Her tactical is a gravity lift that can lift you and other players to some really nice high spots on the map. She can also use this to sit atop of and snipe and get new angles on teams in fights. Though do be careful because after a few seconds it will throw you off. And her ultimate is a black hole that sucks everyone caught into it towards the center. And this is where it works really well with nades. Throwing the ult on top of a team and whipping some arc stars can result in easy downs and win a team fight before anyone has a chance to shoot. Horizon is for the people that want to learn some flashy movement and cause panic with her ultimate. She's a ton of fun to play when you can make full use of her passive in my opinion. But enough about Horizon, let's move on to Octane. Octane is for the people that want to do nothing but mindlessly run at teams as fast as you possibly can. His passive makes it so that when you're not taking damage for a few seconds, he regens health at a fairly quickly rate. This is nice because then you don't have to carry as many health heals. Personally, whenever I play him, I never carry syringes because you don't need to. But it's also nice because his tactical is a stim that grants him insane movement speed, making him the fastest character in the game when in use. It also does take a chunk of health, so having the passive healing is very nice when not stimmed up. His ultimate is a jump pad that allows you to fly head first into fights. Literally. Throw it on the ground and use it as a tool to get on height or push teams very quickly. Though be careful because it's very loud now and teams will hear you coming. If you're going to be playing Octane, you have to want to run full speed at everything and be willing to fall into the loot goblin stereotype. You have to play with the mindset that everything is yours. That purple armor? Yours. That gold helm? Yours. That purple mag your teammate dibs? Yours. The leftover in the fridge your sibling has been dreaming about all day? Yours. That cute girl at the gym's phone number that your friend has been trying to get for weeks? You best believe that that is yours also. Never back down from stealing someone's loot. And stealing is a nice transition into our next character, Revenant, because he steals the will of your enemies to play the game. Revenant is for the people who want to take all the fun away for the people that have to fight you. He is an amazing tool for you and your team to fight with, but everyone else will not like you. But hey, Apex isn't fun on its own. Part of the fun is making sure that no one else has fun when they play, right? His passive allows you to walk faster when crouched. If you're in gunfights, crouch and strafe. It makes you move faster and can be harder to hit. You can also climb extremely high. There is a limit to it, but I don't know if you'll ever run into that. If you want to push, say, a building, but you don't want to take the zip lines, just climb up the side. His tactical is a ball that you throw at people, and if they touch it, they can no longer use any abilities. It silences them. So it makes it very tough for teams to run away from you when you try to fight them. And the reason that most people will hate you is his ultimate. That is his death totem. This ability makes it so when his team goes into a fight, you have a pool of 100 health. When enemies deal that much damage to you, you get teleported back to the totem with only 50 of that damage showing up. Meaning if you have purple or red armor, you have enough health to jump back into the fight. You have a free chance to kill someone, and if that goes poorly, you just get to walk away barely touched, or if it does go well, you can just come back into the fight for round 2 a few seconds later. Revenant is a great fighting tool for teams, and if you lack confidence in fights and want to have a tool to help you gain that confidence, he's the main you're looking for. Now the last aggressive legend is Wraith, the OG Queen of Portals. Wraith is a great team based legend, but also really good for people who want to fly solo sometimes. Her tactical some people find useless, but I personally like it. It's a voice you hear whenever someone looks at you or there's traps nearby. There are some other lines, but those are the two that I I find most useful. This is just mainly to know if you need to hide or pick up a new path when running. Her tactical is a nice get out of jail free card on fights. With this, Wraith phases into the void and becomes untargetable for a few seconds. She also gets a speed boost allowing you to get out of fights very easily if you start to lose them. And then she has her portal ultimate. She places one end down and then runs around. She can place it up to 75 meters and can travel back and forth as many times as we want until it goes away. You'll know it's going to disappear when you reach 20% back on your ultimate charge. Wraith is really straightforward. Fight, get shot, phase, run away. She's for the people that want to have really nice team mobility and usefulness while still being able to solo carry and be that sweaty player. Just quickly though, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up, it really does help the channel. And if you want to stay updated with all of our new videos coming out, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. But now that we have that covered and are done with Offensive Legends, let's move into our Recon Buddies. These are for the people that like having team usefulness and offering support like abilities while still being aggressive when the time comes. These legends are Crypto, Valkyrie, Seer, Pathfinder, and Bloodhound. First up is Crypto. This is a legend for players who like to see what's going on around them, giving them and their team tons of info. Crypto doesn't really have a passive, it just allows your teammates to see the outlines of enemy your drone scan, so let's talk about the drone. His tactical is a little drone you can control and fly around. It can scan enemies to show the outline of them, even through stuff like caustic gas. It also can scan beacons, open doors, and if you look at the banners around the map, it can show you how many teams are near you. There is a ton to unpack with Crypto, so keep an eye out on our channel for 
for a legend guide that will go more in depth about this. And last up is his ultimate, this is an EMP that the drone emits, once it explodes it deals 50 damage to any enemies caught in it. Though be careful because if you are inside of it, it will hurt you also, but it does not affect your teammates. On top of that, the EMP will also break any Watson fences, pylons, caustic traps or gibby bubbles that it hits. Crypto is a good legend for getting information to his team, but he does need to be flying his drone around to do so. If you're looking to main him, be aware that your team can run off and leave you stranded if you're solo, so just be paying attention. And second up, we have Valkyrie. Valk is for the people that played Titanfall and can't let it go, but didn't want to go the Ash route. She is also for the people that like having a ton of rotation options. Her passive outlines people when you're flying, giving you a bit more information on where teams are. It also outlines the ones that are on the ground that you can see when you're in your ultimate. And her passive also has a jetpack, allowing you to be able to jetpack around and get some cool height on teams. Her tactical are rockets that she fires out, they are like mini arc stars. They do damage and slow your movement and sensitivity. These are really useful for fights installing teams that are trying to push you or even help single player out that is split from their team and can make it an easy kill. Her ultimate is what a lot of people like on her though, this is basically a mobile redeploy balloon. She hovers in the air allowing her teammates to attach to her and then after reactivating it then blasts off into the sky allowing you to skydive and make some awesome rotations. If you like rotating easily and having a lot more options and flexibility, play Valkyrie. But next up let's talk about Seer. Seer is for the people that like being a scan character but didn't like to play Crypto or Bloodhound. Their passive is a heartbeat sensor allowing you to see if enemies are near you when scoped in. This can be nice when looking for rats or to see if a team is trying to walk up on you. His tactical is where he sends out a tunnel of love that outlines anyone it hits. It also shows their health, interrupts any actions, and silences them for a tiny little bit. So if you're resing a teammate or healing and get hit by it, it will cancel that. When you're fighting a seer and you get hit by this and you're trying to heal, it can be extremely annoying. And his ultimate puts up a big dome that tracks people that are running in it. It shows you where they are and allows you to easily take angles on them. You can get around this though by bunny hopping, it doesn't show that you are doing that because it still counts you as crouching. Seer is a nice scan character to have, I personally enjoy Bloodhound more, but the interrupt and showing health can be nice. Next up let's talk about Pathfinder, this is for the people that want to be Spider-Man but didn't realize that they downloaded the wrong game, or they're on Xbox and can't play the Spider-Man games. His passive is kind of non-existent because it only allows you to scan the beacons that are on the map, though interacting with these survey beacons does give you your ultimate instantly and gives you 10 seconds off the cooldown of it. His tactile is a grappling hook that allows you to be aggressive or defensive when you need it. It can get you to push a team extremely quickly or run away from a team if the fight doesn't go your way. His ultimate is more for rotating or getting high ground, but if you are able to do the super jump on it, you can throw it down in fights and have some weird angles on teams. If you want to know more about what I'm talking about, go check out Caution and how he uses Pathfinder zip lines. Pathfinder is for people that want to have a lot of options. You can be offensive, defensive, get your team places, get you places, get high ground. There's so many options with Pathfinder. But now let's talk about Bloodhound, my personal main. This is for people that like throwing out scans and knowing exactly where people are in fights. Their passive is that you can see footprints that are left behind by enemy teams, allowing you to see where teams are rotating. This is really nice when you're rotating because it allows you to see if you're walking up on someone. Their scan is a tactical that goes through walls and can outline enemies that get caught in it. This ability gives your team so much information in fights. And their ultimate is a bunch of things built into one. It's a digi threat, it's a speed boost, and it allows you to scan faster by reducing the cooldown on it. Play Bloodhound if you like giving your team a ton of information as well as being super aggressive when the time comes for it. Now we can move on to our defensive legends. These are for the people who want to play more passive, holding buildings and being the backlight for your team. These legends are Caustic, Watson, Rampart, and Gibraltar. First up, let's talk about Caustic. These are for the people that like gassing players out and killing them with the stinkiness. Caustic, like Gibraltar, has the fortify perk so he takes less damage. This is because they are bigger and have wider hitboxes, making them easier to hit, so they had to combat that somehow. He doesn't really have a passive, it just allows you to see any enemies that are getting hit by your gas. His tactical is a gas trap that you can place around the map. These can also block doors and give you a lot of options when holding a building. The gas does do a lot of damage and slows anyone that's caught in it, so you can have a lot of options when fighting teams with it. And his ultimate is a gas nade that is just a mobile gas trap that doesn't have to have any time to deploy. You can throw this on top of teams to force them out of spots or use it to cut off rotation in fights. If you want to have a defensive legend that can also flip the script and use their traps offensively, Caustic is the way to go. But what if you want to play the other trapped legend, Watson? Watson is for people that also like to be defensive, but having an extra layer on top of that with her ultimate. Watson's passive kind of is non-existent again because it only allows her to stack ultimate accelerants and whenever you pop one, no matter what charge you're at, it auto
automatically has your ultimate for you. Her tactical Z trap part of her kit though, it allows you to place fence nodes around the map or building that you're holding. When you connect these fence nodes though, an electric current runs in between them. That slows and damages any enemies that run through it. This ability is a really nice deterrent from teams trying to push your building because they really have to be careful when trying to get through them. They either have to take the time to destroy them or just push through and be an easy target. And her ultimate is the interception pylon. This is a pylon that Watson can place down, making so that her team can't be needed out. Any enemy projectiles coming into the bubble of protection get immediately destroyed. This includes frags, thermites, arc stars, Gibraltar alt, Bangalore alt, and caustic alt. On top of that, it also heals your shields when you're in the proximity of it. I totally forgot that Watson does passively heal her shields. That is new and I still sometimes forget about it. But this also heals your enemies and your teammates shields when they're in the proximity, so you gotta be a little bit careful sometimes. Now let's talk about Rampart. Rampart is for people that really like using LMGs and pumping out a ton of damage when being relatively stationary. Her passive allows you to boost any LMG you pick up. That means that she has higher mag capacity and faster reload times. Her tactical is a wall that she places down and after a few seconds of deploying, amplifies any damage of the bullets that are getting shot through it. It also provides a layer of protection because enemies on the other side cannot shoot you. They have to break the shield first in order to actually damage you. And her ultimate is a big minigun that she can either place down or walk around with. Rampart's kit is super straightforward and pretty basic, but when done right is super oppressive. Rampart is for people that really like to be defensive in certain ways, but want to still pop out a ton of damage. Now let's move on to Gibraltar. I personally think that Gibraltar is more of a support, but Respawn categorized him as a defense. This is for people that want to be that strong anchor for their team. Gibraltar has a lot to offer, so let's hop right in with his passive. His passive is a gun shield that pops up whenever you're aiming down sights. This ability alone can easily win you 1v1s because it gives you an even bigger health pool. With his gun shield on top of having the fortified perk gives Gibraltar a huge health pool. But now let's talk about his tactical, which is his bubble. His bubble is a little dome that he can throw down, giving his teammate mobile cover. While inside this bubble though, he also does revive his teammates a lot faster. This is a really nice ability of you and your teammates get caught out and are really in a pinch. And his ultimate is a bombardment that he can call in. It is in a very small concentrated area, but it can really pin teams down or force them to move from their playing spots. It has a ton of uses though, like denying teams from pushing, cutting off rotations, making so that teams have to go back inside their building, and so much more. Again, there's a lot to unpack with Gibraltar, so do be keeping an eye on the channel for a Gibraltar guide coming out soon. But now let's finish this list off with the two support legends, that being Lifeline and Loba. These are for the people that want to do nothing but be the support for their team. Starting off with Lifeline, these are for the people that want to do nothing but revive the Octane that's hopped into a 1v5 encounter for the 20th time. Her tactical is a Doc Drone that she places on a teammate that revives them without her having to do the animation. While doing this, she can continue to fight, keeping the team from thirsting the Octane. Do keep in mind though that you can use this on two people at the same time, so if both of your teammates are down, you can do it on both of them. Now her tactical is another Doctor on that you place down, but instead of reviving your teammates, this one gives you health. When you are standing near this, it attaches to you, replenishing the health that you may be missing up to a certain cap. And now going to Lifeline's ultimate, it is a care package that you can call down. It comes down fairly quickly, and when it hits the ground, you can open it, revealing the loot that's inside. You will not get any weapons from this. However, you can get attachments for guns, heals, or even an upgraded armor. This is a really nice boost if you're struggling on armor attachments after looting your entire POI. If you are really itching to be that hardcore support and revive your teammates constantly, play Lifeline. She is the main for you. But now let's talk about the last legend, Loba. Loba is for the people that want to have a support playstyle but still can be aggressive or have an escape tool. Her passive allows you to see anything purple or gold outline. Even if they're in care packages, crates, it doesn't matter. She will see it through walls, every Everything. This means that you can be pretty loot goblin-y, but not as much as Octane. Now her tactical is a bracelet that you can take off and throw. After a short period of time when the bracelet lands, you then are teleported to the bracelet's location. You can also activate it early to make it fall immediately and teleport you there. Though be careful because you cannot cancel this. If you are using it, you are going wherever the bracelet goes. So you can get caught by teams pretty easily. And then we have her ultimate, the actual support ability on her kit. This is where she places down her black market. In the set area around her where her black market hits, she is able to access all the loot. You can then take unlimited ammo from the black market and up to two items. This means that you can grab like 400 light ammo and
and then a sight and a barrel attachment. Or if you don't want a sight or barrel attachment, you can trade those out for some heals. This can be really nice in certain situations, especially towards endgame, where you might be struggling on heals and ammo. You can throw your black market down, loot whatever teams have died near you, and be perfectly safe while doing so. Lobo is for the people that want to still have the support ability with their ultimate, but still be able to get in and out of fights if they don't go her way, or if they do go her way, with the bracelet. But that is all for today's video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something new and this helped you pick your main, please go ahead and drop a thumbs up on the video if you haven't done so already. Also, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you really should consider doing that. We post daily, highly educational Apex Legends videos that are aimed at making you the best player you can possibly be. So smash the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when new videos go live. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming and I will see you in the next one.